Hi, I'm comedian Phil Jameson, and today I'm going to talk to you about sequel culture. But I'm not going to talk whatsoever about Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, those are all Disney. A lot of people have talked about that, but I honestly don't feel qualified to have any sort of new take alongside or against Martin Scorsese. What I do have some perspective on is online content creation. I've been doing it for years and I've seen some measure of, and I, I truly hesitate to use this word, success. It might not be immediately obvious that what we call sequel culture or the trend towards franchises is at all present in what we see online. But I'd like to make the argument that it is more pervasive in social media than elsewhere. When you see something you like, the natural response is to want to experience that feeling more. If it's a sitcom or the first book in a fantasy series or Larry the Cable Guy saying get her done, you're in luck. There's plenty more where that came from. That's what I think people are looking for when they ask for sequels. They want to feel the same way they felt experiencing the first one. Could be you laughed, could be you were surprised, you were afraid. But the frame of reference for making that request has shifted from having that feeling to having that thing. Instead of more like this, it's more of this. In film, this is the difference between saying, you want another Studio Ghibli movie, and saying, I want Spirited Away too. A sequel implicitly promises the same feeling, but if it fails to deliver, it leaves you disappointed. I recently made a post called, I never should have gone back to school, where I wrote a section of a philosophy essay that I got an F on. In just a week, it's up there with Ace Watkins and some of my most viewed videos as far as popular projects that I've worked on. Oh, and my performance art piece, being called Loki. Quick aside for comedy theory, I love this format. It instantly introduces both characters, their relationship to each other, which includes an authority component, consequences of those actions, and it's universally relatable. Plus, one of the big issues with a comedy duo is you always have to find reasons why the funny man would ignore the straight man's feedback. Justifying that can get kind of hard, but you don't have to do it in an essay. You could just do jokes. Regardless, I wrote what was essentially a short piece of sketch comedy into that image, and I think it uses up all of its jokes. Any additional length would only weaken it. You wouldn't be able to suspend your disbelief on whether it's a real essay. Crushing Turtles has already used up its rule of three, so that's gotta start over. Perchance would be completely used up and dried out. Basically, everything you liked about the essay would be completely unusable. You can tell because of how much it sucks to listen to this right now. Now, that being said, I have received thousands of requests to post the full essay. And I'm glad people enjoyed it as much as they did. I love getting supportive comments like this. And I'm sure that I could get a few more thousand followers by posting a good follow-up to this essay. But it wouldn't be as good for all the reasons I just listed. In fact, I think it would even end up corroding how people felt about the original post. If I weren't discussing this exact phenomenon, it would put a hard expiration date on this video. But if you're watching in six months, hopefully this will reinforce my point. This kind of viral post, expires. Real quick, I should say, this is not talking down all series. Most content is contained in some sort of series, and plenty of them have a lot to offer and are better suited to a series than a standalone piece of content. By all means, if the, if the ground is fertile, grow the corn. I have a series being released in the next couple months with a leading adult-oriented nighttime cartoon programming brand via a popular streaming website. It's even possible that my philosophy student ends up writing more essays in the future. But there are downsides to forcing something that's already finished to continue living. I know this because I have read books. The first time you go viral is overwhelming. You will receive every piece of feedback from you are a king and a god to a notarized death threat. It can be exciting or anxiety inducing depending on your reaction to an historically unprecedented amount of stimulus. For me, I have an addictive personality, which I'm sure has no correlation to me pursuing a career with short-term highs and long-term lows. For those who are looking to do this as a career, it can be very confusing what to do next, particularly if you didn't plan for a follow-up to the post. And in a vacuum, there will be an immense amount of feedback asking for more of the same. But, and I know this is obvious based on how I look, I used to do close-up magic. And the first rule of magic is never reveal your secrets. Put another way, just because the audience is asking for something doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Give the people what they want is not necessarily give the people what they're asking for. Sometimes is, 
sometimes isn't. By the way, the platforms would prefer you make the same thing again too. They are much more focused on recommending content for viewers than recommending creators for viewers. As a result, you'll see more recommendations the more similar your content is, but this is often going to lead to more attention on a worse product. This is essentially where all the pressures in online content creation currently lie. I don't think it's a good recipe. It's like when you order a new couch and then for the next year you get ads for a new couch. This is all part of a trend away from the creator and towards the content series. A while ago, YouTube added a layer between the viewer and creator by decreasing the importance of the subscription fee. TikTok barely cares at all if you follow someone. Almost their entire app is built on their recommendation system, and Instagram is more and more becoming the same way. And the main way to combat this, to build loyalty as a creator? You guessed it. Drill down on that brand. So platforms say they want it, viewers say they want it, and your channel will likely grow if you do it, and you're saying, don't do it. Okay, well, when you put it like that, I sound like an asshole. I'm just saying that an immense number of things online that don't justify having sequels end up with many sequels. Leonardo da Vinci never drew the Vitruvian man's ass. Let me see it from the back. My point isn't not to do it. It might be a great idea. And my point isn't to never ask for sequels because they might rule. My point is, as viewers, maybe we should spend a little bit more time checking out the back catalog instead of looking forward to something new. And maybe as a creator, I should spend some more time exploring what else I like to do. I don't know. So much like the Mario essay, I'm not sure how specific my conclusion is. Series can be great. They can also be horrible. I guess this was all to crystallize how I feel about the pressure to capitalize on viral posts, to offer what little advice I can to other content creators, and to explain to you why I'm not going to show you the bottom of this page. That was supposed to be really cool. It was supposed to stand up. That was supposed to be a lot more dramatic. Thanks for watching, everybody per chance. Thank you so much for watching and thank you also to all my Patreon patrons who have supported me to branch out a little bit in my style of posts. In part, you're responsible for me making the Mario essay last week as well as uh, this video essay this week. Um, I really appreciate it, especially since so many Patreons are project specific. Kind of the exact same thing we're talking about uh, here uh, and, and the way our Patreon is structured just lets me do um, whatever my little heart desires. So cheers. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.